Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Viral with FKI Quality. You are watching a video on the control charts used to explain the results of the Red Beats experiment. We have a couple of uh, other videos which describe this experiment in more detail and the lessons to be learned from it. So please watch those videos before uh, continuing to watch this one. They can be found on the FKI Quality YouTube channel. And also while you are there, subscribe to the channel because we uh, continuously upload new videos uh, uh, all the time. Here's a control chart for an experiment that I ran some time ago. A control chart is a tool that shows whether a process is stable or not. It does this by um, exposing exceptional variations that um, indicate uncontrolled factors inside the system. After all, the control chart, what it shows, this, the, the sequence of numbers that, uh, that you can see here in red, which I'll get into more detail in a second, what they really represent is, the, is an outward expression or a measurement of the behavior of a system. So if uh, we can, uh, through, through this tool, show that there are some numbers which really are of an exceptional nature, then that would indicate that there are certain factors which are not being controlled. It basically tells you, the control chart, what you need to know in order to improve the process so that there are no points totally uh, um, out of range and also any other strange behaviors of the data. So the control chart is a powerful management tool. Let's learn about it. This won't be like any stats class that uh, you might have had in the past and read it. It'll be a really interesting discussion of what is the use of the control charts for the purposes of understanding truly numbers and also doing something meaningful and uh, well-informed with them. In the chart here, you're going to see a number of things. First of all, there is this uh, zigzag uh, red line, which is made of the various points that we have. Uh, uh, and these, these points represent the number of red beads that were obtained, that were uh, produced by the participants when they did this, this experiment. You can see here in this diagram that in addition to the uh, zigzagging line, there are also three other lines. There's one line, which is the line of averages, calculated to be at 9.7. In addition to this, there is also a line called uh, label U over here, which is the upper control limit, which is calculated to be at about uh, 18. And then uh, another line over here called L, uh, which is the lower control limit, uh, calculated to be at about 1. We also have the target line, which is what the customer wanted us to get in, number, in terms of red beads, and that is uh, at five. Uh, this line doesn't really, um, is, is not really part of the control chart, but it's clearly something that uh, customers wanted. The upper limit and the control limit describe what we're gonna call a range of natural variation because uh, it is derived from the behavior of the process and, this, uh, and, the, and the dimensions, the actual values are calculated from the data itself. Variation inside this range is routine and should be expected. And variation from point to point inside this range does not indicate a change in process behavior. So this means that, for instance, an increase uh, or let's say a drop in the number of beats from here, this value that was 13, down to this value that was a 6, which may seem like a fairly dramatic change, a large change, where the, the, the variation between those two values actually is equal to 7, 13 minus 6 equal to 7, really doesn't represent any different uh, in behavior or in skill between one person and the next one. This may seem counterintuitive, uh, but that's an important uh, problem for us to, to fix in our understanding of the numbers. So what is the first thing to always look for in, in a control chart? The question is, do you see any red dots outside of the limits? So one more time, here we have upper control limit at 18, lower control limit at 1, and the, the quick answer is no, there are no points outside of limits, right? Um, if there were any, this may indicate the presence of a possible cause of concern. And in this case, our job will be to investigate it and uh, if we find it, um, counter it, right? But in this case, there are no uh, numbers outside. And the meaning of that 
is that this, um, this system is in a state of control. And therefore, all variation is due to the, uh, just the, the, the variation that is built into the system um, and not any uh, uh, particularly special cause. Now, the fact that there are no points outside of the limits doesn't mean that it may not happen. In fact, uh, I have done this um, exercise with different groups of people over 40 times, and every now and then uh, you will get a number that is higher than the upper control limit. Um, but, uh, you know, in that case, it's actually very easy to tell what was happening because we saw the experiment happening. And usually what occurs is that somebody just gets nervous uh, as they are, you know, handling the, the paddle, and for whatever reason, they kind of go like this. They, they, just, they just dip the paddle and then very, very quickly draw the paddle in such a way that the, the, the beads just fall off. They roll off the paddle. And the way that this is counted, in case uh, you didn't know it, uh, not only we count the number of reds as effective, but we also count the number of uh, empty holes in the paddle because they didn't go to serve. A, they are not part of the production lot and therefore they are considered effective as well. So it's just very easy, the person got nervous for whatever reason, and uh, th that's, that's what happens sometimes. A, a special cause can be something that uh, can be discovered well, with a little bit of observation, um, knowledge of the process, of the underlying process, uh, speaking with people who observe the process on a continual basis, and also uh, just uh, you know, plain observation when you go to, to, to the place of work, to the Gemba, and figure out what may be happening, or you speak with people, you talk to people, uh, who do the work and they can uh, explain it, this to you. In other cases, of course, it's not going to be an easy thing and some additional research may be needed. But that's the, an example, a perfect example of an assignable cause. Somebody got nervous, they withdrew the, the, the paddle too quickly, a few of the marbles rolled off, and there you go, 20-something uh, beats, um, uh, which clearly is outside of the limits. Now, like we said before, if there are no dots uh, outside of the limits, then it is more likely than not that the process is stable. This means that it is predictable, which is a great thing to have in business, uh, a certain amount of predictability due to the stability of a process. Uh, a process that is behaving in a predictable way uh, will give similar results in the future, which means that these uh, limits uh, uh, serve a, a, a forecasting purpose, a, a predicting purpose uh, that allows us to, uh, with confidence, determine that the number of red beads will be contained uh, more often than not, or actually quite often, inside this range of between 1 and 18 red beads, uh, with an average of 9.7. Now, what I just said means that it is predictable and that it is stable. It doesn't mean that it is what you want. It doesn't mean that it is what our clients want. It just means that it is predictable. It's far easier to try to reach a target use following and adjusting a predictable process than trying to reach a target with a process that can be completely, you know, uh, going high and going low or just doing anything in an uncontrolled way. But so, so it, it's, uh, it's far better to be in a predictable situation than an unpredictable. So that already is progress. But, but it doesn't mean, however, that it is going to be a satisfying process. Uh, remember that we need to separate in our minds what is the voice of the process, which is what we're talking about here. This is an expression of the behavior of the process, versus what do we want as customers. And uh, something uh, maybe not so um, nice for us to hear, but really the process doesn't care what we want, you know? Um, the process uh, just behaves the way it behaves because of how it's been made up. And like we saw in a prior video, it has to do with the combination of a number of factors processes, the individuals working on it, the measurements uh, taken, the incentives, uh, the equipment, the materials that we use, the information, etc., etc. Another thing that is important about this chart at this point is to realize that all variation that we see here is due to the process itself, not the workers. In the simulation, the supervisor only focuses on the workers, on purpose, of course, right? We really don't try to be mean, but that's what we do in order to make everybody realize uh, that the simulation is a fairly realistic representation of what uh, happens at work, where each one of us only has certain control of one part of our jobs, but not the end-to-end -end process. So in the simulation, there was no reason to congratulate the ones who got a small number of reds or to fire the ones who got a large number of reds. Let's see a few cases where um, 
uh, these uh, numbers could be uh, misinterpreted uh, and then what would be the right interpretation and action. For instance, one of the cases that would be uh, interesting to, to, to take a look at is this one over here. We actually had one success, right? We had one worker who gave us four red beads where the limit had been five. So you bet that we were like very, very happy during the simulation with this, with this person, right? Um, we, we cheer her for accomplishments and, uh, and uh, of course she, she was kind of uh, pretty happy and, and feeling good about herself. Um, and then what happened? Let's see, this is a simulation where we had six uh, willing workers, six participants. So her next time at the paddle would have been six points from here. So let's take a look, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Look at this, the same person who just had given us a four now has given us a 14, 14 red beads. How do you think she was feeling? Actually, she was a, a little upset. She was kind of feeling like, uh, what did I do wrong? Uh, why could I not sustain this level of, of performance? Why could I, could I not do it again? And as you probably realize, uh, she just got lucky when she got four red beads. And then she just got unlucky, if you would, when she got 14 red beads. Uh, it's just a vari the variation in the process. And so we really cannot pass judgment on these numbers one by one, because they all are falling inside the range of natural variation. Another case happens when you have somebody who has uh, a very small number of beads, okay? It happens, maybe a person gets, you know, eight, seven, nine, or something like this. Um, this actually happened with somebody in another simulation, and this person, uh, was not fire, as, uh, as you know, sometimes you may get fire if you uh, are among the, the worst performers, quote unquote, worst performers. So he was uh, doing pretty well. And he uh, even felt a little uh, good about himself. Uh, so something funny happened at that moment, which is that uh, at some point uh, after the simulation, he kind of uh, kind of called me aside with a little bit of an air of confidence. And he tells me, hey, Francisco, you know what? Um, that thing that you were saying about, uh, you know, the wrist and, and dipping it at 44 degree angle and all of that, um, he told me, I think I actually got it. <laughs> so he actually bought into the lie, which is a terrible thing, right? So very, very gently and, and immediately, I kind of kind of held his bubble and just kind of pop it and say, no, <laughs> it was never like that. It was just uh, really the natural variation of the process. Uh, I'm glad that you like the simulation, but don't think that you were really doing amazingly well. Uh, more than anything else, you just got lucky. Something else that we do in the simulation, which can also be seen in a control chart, is that at the, after a certain number of rounds, we say, now we know who are the best workers, right? Because we tally uh, horizontally the, the, the amount of red beads per person. Uh, and of course, we will say, well, here we manage by numbers, and so this is where we're going, we're going to be very, very objective as to any decisions uh, for keeping certain employees or not keeping certain employees. Well, this is what we did over here. By this point, we have run the simulation 24 times. That is uh, six, uh, four rounds of six individuals. By this point, there's sufficient data, uh, supposedly, there's sufficient data to make judgments on the performance of someone and uh, get rid of a couple of individuals. And that's what we did. That's why there's a gap also here between uh, this data set and this data set. And as you can see here, these are our high potentials. These are our top performers. We should definitely be able to produce lower numbers. Hopefully now with them and with all their help and willingness and desire and skill and everything, we should be able to finally meet the client requirement of less than five. But as you can see clearly and sadly, we didn't. The numbers that we got were as high as any other numbers. In fact, the average of these, uh, of these four observations is 10 and a half, which is even more than when we had, when we had the whole team, including the quote unquote low performers. Now, having said that the upper and the lower control limit um, are really uh, where, where the vast majority of times you, you are going to find uh, the, num the number of red beads uh, drawn by every person. Uh, like I said, sometimes you find numbers which are above the upper control limit, like in the case of somebody getting nervous and dropping a bunch of beads off the paddle. 
but also every now and then you may find that you go below the lower control limit. Uh, now this is very rare, really, really very rare. Um, it has happened to me only once uh, where I actually got someone to uh, produce no red beads. So we had a complete, uh, we had zero red beads. Uh, everybody was very, very surprised, myself included. And I can tell you that it has happened only once in a number of years. Uh, and this is about a thousand draws if I were to do the total count and it has happened only once. So can, the, can a, a number of red beads go outside of control limits without having any particular um, cause behind it, any assignable cause or a special cause? Yes, it can happen, but it will happen very rarely. And that's also something that a control chart can tell us. I hope you enjoyed this video. What we were trying to do here was to show you the use of a tool that is not a very complicated tool. It's called a control chart. Uh, it, and it is a tool that allows us to see whether or not a variable is, is in a state of control, which means that it is predictable or not. And when something is not predictable, then our first job is to make sure that it becomes in a state of control, that it is predictable by uh, studying the point where the, the point that was outside of the limits and then trying to determine what may be the causes behind that and if they are likely to recur to fix them so that we go back to a state of stability and predictability. Without predictability, continuous improvement really is just a, a dream, it's a fallacy and it will not be uh, anything that can be sustained for any period of time. Thank you for your attention.